everyone, and welcome back to Silver Run Forest. Uh, as you can see today, we are in our tractor and we are heading down to the store. Uh, main reason is there's a couple of items we are going to need to get today. Well, one, uh, we're going to actually purchase, and two, the second one, uh, we are going to be renting. Because we have a weed problem. That sounds odd to say it like that, but yeah, we've got a weed problem. Just a small weed problem, though, nothing too terribly huge. So, uh, yeah, if we have a quick look at the map here, you can see we've got a small smattering of, I'm guessing that's like yellow and pale yellow, or green and pale green, um, colour here across our field. And that is a mix of mostly um, small weeds and some slightly bigger weeds. Now, I had a scout around the field earlier, and if I can find the shop button, where are you? Do I not get close enough? Why can I not find the shop icon now? Is it over here? No, that's that one. No doubt it will turn up as soon as I get to... Oh no, it's that doing its weird thing again. Okay. Uh, there we go, I found the shop icon. <laughs> so yes, uh, what we are getting today is, let's see, weeders. We are going to rent this uh, little Aerostar Exact, because we don't have a huge weed problem at the moment, so I figure if we just lease this rather than buying it outright, then we should be able to use it quick and return it and it not be a problem. So, next on the agenda is for the animals. I think I may have alluded to it last time, or flat out mentioned it, or I can't remember. But uh, because we have cows, and cows require um, hay as a, an 80%, I was going to say source of income, but um, no, an 80% uh, uh, food quality thingy, um, I figured what we are going to do is get this fantastic little elo tether. Now obviously it's just a small footprint tether, uh, we don't need anything big because we've got that swathing uh, mower, so we're going to grab that and we're going to keep that because well, you know, we're going to purchase it flat out because for now we should be, uh, uh, should be using that quite a lot. So uh, let's see, I need to pick that up on the front. Which I should be able to do. Get rid of that menu. There we go. Pick that up on the front and it should. Yes, lovely. And then if I swing around this way, we should hopefully be able to drive onto the sea, uh, weeder. Yeah, that's not quite what I'd wanted. There we go. Okay, we got the weeder on the back. Lovely. Now all we've got to do is get it back to the farm in one piece, right? Well, hopefully that won't be too big of an issue. Uh, so yeah, uh, what had happened was I checked our grass field this morning when I got up, and as it turns out, since we are in August now, it is actually fully grown and ready to cut at its maximum capacity. So uh, obviously subject to our lack of um, fully fertilising it. I don't think we fully fertilised it. We might have, and I'm beginning to wonder now because I generally genuinely don't remember <laughs> but uh, we shall see how it does and I'm hoping that uh, uh, either way I mean, we're not going to need a lot of food uh, not food a lot of hay off of it because we've only got a small amount of animals right now but um, it's certainly not going to hurt to get a nice nice um, cut of hay and it is uh, right in the middle of August so that will dry nicely and all be lovely and delicious for the cows and the sheep. So let us turn in here quick. See if we can get across the train track without having an issue. There we go, lovely. And what I shall do once we get up here is just drop the tether off at um, sort of around the sheep pen area because we're not going to take that up to the actual top of the hill. So what I shall do, in fact I think I'll drop it right here on this little corner. There we go, lovely. And we should still have, yep, the tether is still on the back there. Not the tether, the weeder. <laughs> yeah, 
Yes, so let's get this up here and just start weeding. Now it's pretty hard to see where the actual weeds are, he says. Destroying the weeder entirely on the side of the hill there on the rocks. <laughs> but yes, luckily it didn't look like it took any damage, so I think we're fine. If you don't tell the shop, I won't. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink and all that. <laughs> Uh, yes, it seemed like it would be a, uh, a pretty easy job to do. And uh, just for the sake of doing it this one time, uh, I figure we'll just rent this. Now, in the future, I'm looking at maybe getting a small sprayer of some variety with uh, the John Deere Sense and Spray technology, uh, the special weed detectorist kit, because uh, that will be very good for us. But uh, those do run quite a bit. They are not cheap little things. Uh, in fact, I think the cheapest one we could get is going to be somewhere in the order of... Uh, uh, how much was it now? Um, I want to say it was about 65 grand. Which, I mean, yes, we can afford that. But I figure at the moment we're not humongously in need of it. We've only got this one field. So a few weeds here and there shouldn't be a problem. Uh, if it gets worse, then um, we may have to just get something. Um, you know, just fork out the money for it. But I'm hoping that we are not going to need to. Okay, let's check the map, see how we're doing. Okay, yeah, we've got a few off there. Yeah, I think the... Uh, dark, oh, yeah, you can see on the... On the map, just under the chickens, there's a uh, a dark patch of, of weeds here and there. Although they might be dead weeds, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> but either way, this does seem to be working, which is a good thing. So I'm going to continue on driving around the field with this. Uh, I would let you watch it all, but there's really not anything much to see. Because you can almost completely not see the weeds on the... Uh, or in the crop coming out and to be fair it's not really changing anything on the ground so there really isn't much to see it's just driving around like this trying not to hit the old trees <laughs> and uh, yeah at some point we will expand this field i think to get a slightly bigger one going maybe uh, once we've got a new harvester possibly we'll uh, hit the old um, chainsaw up and maybe trim out some of those trees just back there and make it a little bit bigger over the side of the hill but yeah so for now i am going to continue on doing this and uh, i'll probably mow that field off camera because you've seen me mow it once fairly recently and nothing's changed there but once we get to the uh, the hay portion of the show we shall definitely have a look at that so yeah, i shall see you all presently Okay, we are back now, and it is the second week in August. We got all the weeding done up there on the top of the hill there, and I spent a bit of time just running some things back down to the store uh, rentals that we'd had. Uh, what we did was we got rid of the... Um, yeah, what was it? Uh, well, we returned the weeder, for one thing, and we also took back the um, rock picker thing that we had before briefly on the skid steer, took that back and also the um, subsoiler slash plow that we had uh, because we'd been renting that for a while and it was quite expensive but I figured what we would do was actually get a different one that's recently become available um, probably not right away just whenever we need it next uh, there was a John Deere one of about the same size but an older model um, so we'll probably pick that up uh, at some point in the near future however what I wanted to show you just before we start the uh, uh, the mowing of the field here is uh, on upon the sort of advice and mutual thinkings of a, uh, a good friend quiet robot what I have done here is smoothed out a little bit of the land here made it just a little bit more level at the bottom of the hill and uh, we put a small wooden railing in there and uh, it's it's not the flattest but it's hopefully a bit flatter than the uh, the hillock that it was before so uh, the idea is we should be able to get uh, get one of the trailers in down here and just load it up fairly easily with um, the bales once we've got this thing mowed. 
And that uh, was the door. It's this side. Uh, mowed and tethered, I should say. So, let's have a look and a go and see about getting this grass cut. Now, this should be quite an entertaining experience again. And uh, although we haven't fertilised it, uh, it was showing as in fairly good condition uh, due to the uh, precision farming mechanics. It doesn't require as much fertiliser as I thought. And even though we didn't actually put any on, because it was at uh, pretty much zero nitrogen, um, it did say it was still okay. So that's not too bad then. Yeah, that should at least mean that we get a fairly decent looking crop out of it. And it looks like we are too. That's a fairly steady swath there coming out the back. Okay, let's see if we can get up the hill. No, we are spinning a bit there. Okay, not a problem. Let's raise that up. Yes, this mower really wasn't designed for this sort of uh, hill work, as it were. So. We may end up uh, selling this and getting some uh, mowers for the new tractor. But uh, at the time of purchase, this was a pretty solid deal, I think. And, I mean, it is getting the job done. You can't argue with that. It is definitely mowing us up a nice bit of grass. And we do have a nice bit of grass to mow, I think. And this has turned out quite well, this little duello. Little bump there, divot, and I dug out by accident. Oh yeah, that might have happened when we were uh, just levelling off the... Um, oh yeah. Yeah, I think we'll have to fix that divot at some point. <laughs> but, you know, like I say, if we do um, get a uh, different mower in the long run, then um, that may become a non-issue. It does appear to be catching over here now as well, that's awkward. I don't remember it doing that last time, but maybe we just got lucky and it, it went for a, for a good bit of a run previously. Right, let's see if we can go up here. Yeah, it's not even going up here now, that's strange. I could have sworn we did a bit of a up here last time. Oh, maybe we were a bit further up at the time. Who knows. But I think what we will do is get stuck there. <laughs> yes, this is proving to be a little more awkward than I remember it being. I don't recall it being this bad the last time. <laughs> maybe we'll have to get a uh, smoothing tool out over the field again and just... Uh, level some things off once we're done. Who knows. But uh, for now, um, yeah, we'll uh, get this job done and come back for once it's finished, just in case this takes uh, a bit of time and is awkward with this, this field misbehaving. And we'll see, as you can see, this is, yeah, it's bottoming out quite a bit. So rather than put you all through what could potentially be an annoying disaster, although sometimes those are fun to watch, <laughs> what I think we'll do is uh, just do this off camera quick and then come back when we get the tether on it. Because the tether is a newer course. Yes. Lovely. So yeah, I shall see you all in a bit once we've got this mode and got the tether over. Uh, it's surprising how steep the angle on this hill really is, isn't it? <laughs> now, I thought I'd come back before we finish cutting the grass, because something has slightly changed. Uh, I got the hump with that mower um, thing, and sold it and bought this lovely little John Deere rear-mounted side mower instead. <laughs> Yeah, basically I was having such a hard time getting up and down the field. It seems almost like something had reset with either the vehicle or the sort of hillside itself because it was literally catching on all these bumps that it absolutely didn't do the last time. So uh, what I ended up doing was I, I sort of got about a third of the way through the field maybe. And um, you can kind of see it a bit here. 
where it was just sliding the minute I tried to turn around and take off. So I basically just said, that's enough. I'm going to trade it in for something a little bit different. Now, we did take a hit on the um, width. It is only um, 3.1 metres, I think, this one, as opposed to a good 4, maybe 4.5 four on the um, other swapping mower. But, quite frankly, this is immensely more um, acceptable, fun, uh, productive, <laughs> and far less irritating. Uh, obviously, the angle is still interesting, but uh, since we're using the tractor now, I haven't had one incident of um, sort of getting stuck on the uh, the little bumps and humps and wiggly bits in the field. Yeah, this mower is really cutting across quite nicely. I'm I'm fairly well pleased with it as a purchase. You know, I would have preferred not to have had to, but like I say, and I'm missing a bit there, of course, lovely. <laughs> But um, yeah, it was just, it was causing such a hassle that I just decided better to uh, cut our losses, so to speak, and get this instead. Now we might have to look at getting a, a front-mounted windrower, because there are a couple available, I think, possibly a small one. I'll have to have a look and see what prices are in a minute once we get done. But... Uh, Depending on what they are, we may just, or at least just this time, um, use the tether that we've got and uh, just make do with it. But yeah, this this is so much nicer. <laughs> Unless you've actually had problems with that uh, that swath, or you've tried mowing a ridiculous hill like I am, uh, you might not be. Yeah, it might not be quite obvious how big of a difference this is, but it really, really is. It's a massive massive difference is so much easier <laughs> not constantly getting uh, beached on the bumps or having to uh, stop and start lower the header raise the header you know, all that sort of stuff yeah it's it's been a lot nicer <laughs> so yeah get this last little patch done I might have to reverse just a bit yeah missed a couple of bits there Catch him on the backswing though, that's fine. Might as well get that little tufty nub in as well. Okay, let's fold that up, that should. Oh, that's raise and lower, that's fold, there we go. It is a, a rear pointing one, it doesn't fold up, so far as I'm aware. Yeah, there we go. Let's have a quick uh, quick peek in here, have a butchers at these. Uh, Wind rowers just quick. Where are they? On the left. So we've got... Uh, where is it? I think one of those goes... That might be a front one. But that's not the kind of one we're looking for. What I'm thinking of is... Uh, where is it? Front... There's the... Yeah, this little one for 15 grand. Which is a little bit more expensive than I'd like to pay out at the moment. But that might be something to look at getting in the future, the um, Samash, Samaj Twist 600. Yeah. But for now, uh, we're not going to worry too much about it, I don't think. Uh, well, let me go ahead and grab the old uh, LO tether, and we'll come back and get, uh, get tedding, make some hay. I do like this tractor as well. It's very nice. Hello, <laughs> tether. <laughs> Sorry, I've been waiting to make that joke. But... I don't know if I'm on the correct tool. Yes. But... Hey! Lovely, lovely hay. Got this a little bit back there? I might have. We've gone over it just a bit too quick. There we go. But yes, so we are now tedding. Getting some delicious, delicious hay for our lovely cows and sheep. Hopefully they will enjoy it. And it will bring us much revenue in the future. But the main thing I absolutely love about this tedder is that uh, it teds and swaths at the same time. So 
it's not spreading it all out every which way uh, making it sort of a task for us to then come back and retell it again uh, not retell it but re-windrow it should we need to but uh, yeah we don't have to do that which is amazing I'm very happy for that just need to get back and grab that little bit as well. Made a complete mess of that, so it looks awful, but we got it, sort of. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we are. That's such a good animation. <laughs> it it really just is that uh, grass coming out there. Oops, and I'm just spending too much time looking at the animation and driving in all the wrong places. <laughs> That's what I get for doing that. <laughs> there we go, that's better. I'll tidy that up with the baler later on. Uh, but yeah, so uh, this is going to be a bit of a task, going back and forth. And uh, it will require a fair amount of work. Oh, missed a bit. No, not to worry. Just a little bit. I'm sure it will be fine. As long as we get the majority of it, we should be good. And the other good thing about using this tractor is we can drive pretty much straight up the hill too. Which is lovely. <laughs> that will only go as far as we did that uh, straight line. I think that was with the um, other mower we did that. Well, since we're here, I suppose we could go across as well. That's not going to hurt anything. But this is going to be a significant amount of back and forth work. So I shall, I would say plough on, but we're not ploughing, so that joke doesn't work either. <laughs> uh, yes, I shall carry on with this. Giving the grass a little bit of a tickle, so it is nice and dry. And ready to go. And uh, yeah, we'll probably come back um, in the third week of April. Uh, not third week of April. Uh, the third week of August, I should say. And then get to uh, doing the um, uh, baling of said hay. And that will be even better. Because then we'll have some uh, some new bales to find a home for. <laughs> Won't that be exciting? Oh yes. <laughs> so yeah, I shall see you all back here again in a bit with the old baler going. <laughs> well, that's an interesting turn of events, isn't it? The uh, first bale popped off the back and is standing up proud and happy to be a bale of hay. <laughs> Fantastic. So uh, we've had, uh, uh, obviously now it is, uh, what's the date, August, it's the third week in August now. So we are rolling along with the baling. Grass is nice and dry, it has turned into hay, which is fantastic. And uh, when we started, we did have a bit of straw left over in the baler. About 36% um, of a bale, I guess. Uh, I want to say it was around about um, 2,200 litres or so, something like that. Uh, but as soon as we started baling the hay, it uh, was good enough to sort of mash it all together and um, just say it was a hay bale. So the first one's like part straw, part hay, but mostly hay. So that's good. And I think we've got two in the chamber already. And one should be popping off the back fairly soon again. Depending on how this all goes. There we go. I just saw it flop off. And although it's pointing down the hill, it isn't, uh, isn't rolling, which is a good thing. If it was rolling, I'd be a little bit concerned, given that it's a square bale. But, uh, uh, yeah, if it was rolling on a short edge, that might uh, might still happen. You never know. As crazy of an incline as this grass hill is, it really wouldn't surprise me if it did something weird like that. That would be just my luck as well. <laughs> but, fortunately, so far, it's been fairly kind to us. And I did also tinker off-camera with a little bit of that... Um, flat area down there as well just made it a tiny bit smoother because there was a, a couple of nasty bumps in it I'd noticed now whether or not we extend that to the uh, entire 
sort of length of this area I'm not sure yet it may be if I do that I'll have to um, re-plough and reseed some of the field not a hundred percent sure oh we dropped another one off Hurrah. Uh, yeah I'm not entirely sure about that but for now hopefully that little spot will be okay yeah, we can always uh, oh, well we'll find out in a little while when we get to actually doing that and so far this tractor has been performing exemplary it's an exemplary performance however you use that word in a sentence <laughs> now it's been going great guns it has uh, improved it so much it's made our life so much easier now you know, the previous tractor we had the one we started with was good it absolutely was a good tractor and it just wasn't the best suited for this sort of level of work or scale of work I guess you could say mainly it was the size of the hill that's the problem the slope and trying to pull up um, however many thousands of litres of uh, what you call it that we've got here for example um, let's see how much a bale is get to 50% that is good, because these should be, actually let me check, uh, they are 180 centimetres, so it's the smallest bale we can do, but even so it is still going to be a solid uh, six and some thousand litres, which is not terrible. There's our other bale that we just dropped off. Uh, but yeah, so... Um, yeah, what was it? I said like six and a half thousand litres. Something along those lines. Which really isn't terrible. I'm honestly quite impressed with that as uh, oh dear. <laughs> Kicked that one off there. Oh, there we go. I think it's about to throw another one out. Oh yeah, six thousand litres even for the hay, so that's good. But yeah, I mean, we've already got uh, one, two, three, four, five bales out on the field, plus another two at least in here. So I think we're doing rather well so far with the hay, considering we didn't really do a lot to treat this field. Come on, kids, you can do it. There we go. Uh, yeah, considering we haven't done uh, a massive amount... Uh, with this field, I think that's actually a really good, uh, good amount of hay. Now, whether or not we do actually do TMR for these cows, I'm not 100% sure yet. I'm sort of in two minds about it because I do kind of want to. Part of me wants to, uh, but part of me also wants to just keep them as grass or hay-fed cows for now. Uh, because that's something a, a little bit different. You know, everyone always goes the TMR route because, yeah, I mean, it's it's better production. You know, it's 100% uh, instead of 80%, um, I think this one is, just the hay. But, uh, you know, we're only a small farm, a small little hilltop farm type affair. So, you know, it might not be so bad if we just stick to the hay for a change. And we've still got those few straw bales that uh, we'll probably keep on hand just in case. Because yeah. you never know. Maybe if we find a, a cheap feed mixer come up on the market or something, we might look at doing that. Who knows what the future will hold. Right now it's holding hay bales. Oh, there we go, another one off the back. It actually turns really well as well, this uh, this tractor. I almost called it a helicopter for some reason. I'm not sure why. But, uh, yeah, there we go. Zooming down the field. And, uh, okay, it's kind of deceptive, the slope here. You can kind of get a feel for it, going, that we're going downhill, but it's in cab, it's a little bit crazy. Just quite how steep, you know, as we turn there, you can kind of get an idea, I suppose. You can certainly tell, oh yeah, you can definitely see it out there ahead of us now, how crazy that angle is. Yeah. 
who in their right mind would try building a farm on a hill like this? Only me. <laughs> but uh, yes, well, I shall continue on mopping up the last of this hay. And uh, once we're finished, we'll come back, have a quick bale count, and uh, I'll start getting them wrapped up in the old... Uh, well, not wrapped up, because obviously it's hay, not silage. But uh, yeah, I'll uh, start wrapping things up, getting them on the... Uh, the trailer, taking them up to the uh, cows and everything, and finding somewhere to store them, because we'll probably want to uh, throw them under cover, out of the way, and I will just swing around here, come back through the bush, there we go, up oh, there's our line, uh, yep, so yeah, we'll keep them under cover, I might have to shuffle some equipment around and, and everything just to make a bit of space for them, but other than that... Uh, uh, yeah, so I shall see you guys all again in a little bit. Okay, we are back over here now in the skid steer. And I figured we'd come and get this bale that we accidentally tipped on its end first. And I'm just going to drive into it there because the brakes in this thing are absolutely shocking. <laughs> now, we don't really want to pick it up, we just want to give it a nudge. Tip over, come on. No, don't pick it up. Get off. Uh, well, we'll take it. <laughs> that works. That is an acceptable end to the uh, conundrum we were having. Oh, crikey. And we're off again. Yes. Definitely think we need to invest in a new skid steer at some point. <laughs> this one is... Yeah, it's, it's done us good, I'm not going to lie, but it is having its own little uh, issues here and there now, doing some of the tasks we are asking it to do, but it's trying its best and that's all we can ask. Carefully get that off, come down and hit it in the bottom, lovely, and let's get back down to the flat spot. Hopefully, with the bales still on the front of the forklift, um, not forklift, but uh, telehand. It's not even telehand. Skid steer. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> I knew it was in there somewhere. <laughs> Ooh, they are bobbling about just a little bit. Yeah, I think maybe what we need is a small telehandler or front loader of some sort. I could even consider getting uh, a small tractor with one. Depends on what comes up for sale in the, uh... Ooh, stop. Ooh, that was close. Uh, yeah, depends on what comes up for sale in the, uh... The old auctions and stuff. In the, whoa, crikey. In the near future. <laughs> but... I do think that little flat spot we've made has done rather well. Oh, yes, and the bale count in total. We had uh, what appears to be... 12 hay bales and we've got another half a bale left in the um, baler itself whether or not that comes out as hay next time I don't know for sure it may turn out as whatever it is we're baling next but there's a fair to middling chance that we'll actually be doing hay again so it may not be too big of a problem because we're going to try something a little different with the straw he says sliding. I know why they call this skid now. <laughs> you, you steer it by literally skidding. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, we're going to try something a little bit different with the straw, with the um, oat harvest. Uh, specifically, I think I might have mentioned it before in a previous episode. I can't remember. Uh, but what we're going to try and do is see if we can't uh, use the chopped straw or use the straw as it comes out of the harvester, but um, actually get it chopped um, and use that sort of chopping function of the harvester potentially to uh, give us a little bit of extra fertilisation. Now, we'll have to see how it works with precision farming because obviously there is a small chance it may not. I don't know, I've not tried it, but we shall see how it goes. Because if we could do that and get uh, a little bit of fertilising out of the... Uh, stop, please. Oof. 
yeah, if we can get a little bit of fertilising out of the um, the straw, then uh, we'll definitely take that because we may not um, need it for anything else. You know, cows don't need it for bedding, and uh, if we're not specifically going to do TMR, then what have I got stuck? Has my weight got stuck? I think it's my weight on the back of the thing. Here it is. Oh, that's annoying. Okay, there we go, that works. Yeah, I think the angle I'm coming at these things, the, um, give them a bit of a nudge on there. The, uh, the weight on the back of this thing is actually catching on the, um, slope coming up there. Uh, let's hop out. Yeah, it was sort of hitching itself up on that, I think. But nonetheless, let's get a strap on because we don't want what happened last time to happen again. And, uh, yeah, let's get the rest of these things picked up. So, um, yeah, I shall carry on with this. Get this done, get them up to where the um, sheep and the cows are. And uh, continue on with our adventure. So, uh, I do hope you've enjoyed whatever this was. And if you have, then do please give us a like. And consider hitting that old subscribe button there too, if you have not already. And comments are always welcomed. And if you would like to share this video, that would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> and uh, I hope we'll see you next time as we carry on with our semi-forestry, pioneery, farm on the side of a hill adventure that we're on. <laughs> Cheerio, everyone. <laughs>